Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I love the straightforwardness and the simplicity that, that he uses to teach. His teachings are very simple for everybody to understand. If it hadn't been for this ministry, I don't know where I would be. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach through a series that I've entitled, Are You Satisfied with Jesus? That is quite the title. And of course, most people who've been born again and have received salvation, they think, of course I'm satisfied with Jesus. But did you know in practice, we really have gotten our lives to where they are built and centered upon so much other stuff. And I believe things like this pandemic have brought out some of this. People are talking about being depressed and lonely and discouraged and, and things like that. How could you be that way when the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy? And since He never leaves us nor forsakes us, we're always in His presence, there ought to be a constant feast, a continual uh, rejoicing in our heart, and yet there's a lot of Christians that aren't satisfied with Jesus. Not because Jesus doesn't satisfy, but because they aren't looking to Him and appropriating all of this. I started with this from John chapter 14, where Jesus told His disciples that if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Without Him realizing it, are saying it overtly, he was basically saying, Jesus, we aren't satisfied with you. But if we could see the Father, then we'd be satisfied. And I've been making this point, and this is something that you have to receive by revelation because we've all been taught to be carnal. And the word carnal is offensive to most people. They look at that as being terribly sinful. But the word carnal literally means dominated by, by, by your five senses, what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. Most of us only acknowledge this physical realm and we're trying to contact God in some physical way and yet God is a spirit, John 4, 24. Jesus, when He was here on this earth, He had a physical body, but the real Him was a spirit being. It was who He was on the inside. And I use this example all week long. To me, this is just a great example that really ministers to me. But our body is like just a vehicle. It's like our car that we get around in. Our car is good and it's useful, but it's not us. And when we get out of the car, people shouldn't go talk to our car. They ought to talk to us. That car is just a vehicle. This body is not the real us. And did you know that Jesus' physical body was not the real Him? The real Him was who He was in the Spirit. And at the close of yesterday's broadcast, I was making this comparison that John put his head on the, on the chest of Jesus. And he had this intimate relationship with Jesus in the 13th chapter of the book of John. But then on the Isle of Patmos, Revelation chapter 1, he saw Jesus in His glorified self. And when he saw Him, he fell at His feet as if he was dead. It nearly took the life out of him and the Lord had to touch him and raise him up. Did you know Jesus had, wasn't changed? He was the same. When he was in that physical body, the real Jesus, the one that was inside of the vehicle, was exactly the same as when John saw him in the book of Revelation, but John didn't perceive him the same. He was carnal. He was dealing with them only in the natural realm. And because of that, they didn't really know who Jesus was. And let me say some things here. I hope you understand this. But so much of Christianity is trying to contact Jesus in some physical natural realm. It's reflected in our songs about, I'm hungry for you. I'm desperate for you. Oh God, touch me. Oh God, pour out your spirit. And some people think, well, that's all good. It's really not. I guess it could be good if a person meant it in the right way, but most of the time what people are, are saying is, oh God, give me a goosebump. I want to feel you. I want goosebumps, feelings running up and down my spine. I want to see you. I want to hear an audible voice. They're trying to contact God in one of these five senses so that they don't have to use faith anymore. 
DO YOU KNOW, WHEN I FIRST GOT REALLY TURNED ON TO THE LORD, I GOT BORN AGAIN WHEN I WAS EIGHT YEARS OLD, BUT WHEN I WAS 18, I HAD THIS ENCOUNTER WHERE I ENCOUNTERED THE LORD IN A PHYSICAL, NATURAL WAY. I DON'T KNOW HOW TO DESCRIBE THIS. Uh, it's, IT'S BEYOND DESCRIPTION. BUT I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD. I DIDN'T SEE IT WITH MY EYES. I DIDN'T HEAR ANYTHING WITH MY EARS. BUT MY UNDERSTANDING WAS OPENED UP. I WAS IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD. AND I WAS CAUGHT UP IN THE GLORY OF GOD FOR FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS. I MEAN, I WAS JUST OVERWHELMED BY GOD. AND THERE WAS PHYSICAL, TANGIBLE FEELINGS. BUT THAT ONLY LASTED FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS. Uh, I'VE GOT A FRIEND THAT SAID THAT IT LASTED TWO YEARS WITH THEM. I BELIEVE THAT THERE ARE SOME... I BELIEVE THAT GOD CAN TOUCH US IN THESE PHYSICAL, NATURAL WAYS. I'VE EXPERIENCED IT. BUT DID YOU KNOW WHAT? THAT WILL... I'VE HAD PEOPLE that HEAR ME TALK ABOUT THIS AND THEY COME UP AND THEY SAY, WOULD YOU PLEASE PRAY FOR ME THAT GOD WOULD TOUCH ME LIKE THAT? I SAY, NO, I WON'T. <laughs> AND THEY'RE SHOCKED, LIKE, WHY WOULDN'T YOU WANT THAT FOR ME? BECAUSE IT'LL RUIN YOU. I HAVE LITERALLY HAD DOZENS OF PEOPLE COME UP TO ME WHEN I TALK ABOUT EXPERIENCING GOD LIKE THAT AND THEY SAID, DID YOU KNOW, 20 YEARS, 30 YEARS, 40 YEARS, WHATEVER, I EXPERIENCED GOD LIKE THAT AND YET THEIR LIFE IS A TOTAL WRECK. AND YOU KNOW WHY? BECAUSE ONCE YOU HAVE A PHYSICAL, EMOTIONAL ENCOUNTER WITH THE LORD LIKE THAT, IF YOU AREN'T CAREFUL, YOU WILL BECOME ADDICTED TO IT AND YOU WILL GET TO WHERE YOU TRY AND CONSTANTLY JUST DWELL IN THIS REALM WHERE YOU ARE FEELING THE PRESENCE OF GOD. YOU ARE HEARING ANGELS SING AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND DID YOU KNOW WHAT? THAT IS NOT THE WAY THAT GOD WANTS YOU TO RELATE TO HIM. THE BIBLE SAYS IN THE BOOK OF HEBREWS, CHAPTER 11, VERSE 6, WITHOUT FAITH, IT'S IMPOSSIBLE TO PLEASE GOD. FAITH IS WHAT PLEASES GOD, NOT SENSES, NOT FEELING, NOT EMOTION. DID YOU KNOW IF THE LORD WANTED TO, HE COULD REVEAL HIMSELF TO YOU. HE COULD SPEAK IN AN AUDIBLE VOICE. He, THERE'S SCRIPTURAL EXAMPLES OF THIS HAPPENING. HE COULD HAVE A BIRD COME LAND ON YOUR SHOULDER AND JUST WHISPER INTO YOUR EAR AND TALK. I MEAN, HE TALKED THROUGH A DONKEY TO BALAAM. HE COULD TALK THROUGH A BIRD. THERE ARE BIRDS THAT TALK, SAY WORDS. HE COULD HAVE A BIRD LAND ON YOUR SHOULDER AND TELL YOU THAT HE LOVES YOU EVERY MOMENT. OF EVERY DAY. He could, HE COULD GIVE YOU VISIBLE THINGS. HE COULD HAVE ANGELS COME. ALL OF THESE THINGS HAVE HAPPENED, AND THEY STILL DO HAPPEN. BUT IF YOU AREN'T CAREFUL, YOU WILL GET TO WHERE YOU ONLY BELIEVE WHEN THESE PHYSICAL, TANGIBLE THINGS ARE PRESENT. AND I'M TELLING YOU, WE LIVE IN A FALLEN WORLD WHERE YOU AREN'T ALWAYS GOING TO FEEL THE JOY AND THE PEACE AND THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD. AND THIS IS REFLECTED IN SO MUCH OF OUR CHURCH SERVICES. PEOPLE COME IN AND THEY PRAY, OH, GOD, JUST COME AND BE WITH US. OH, GOD, WE ASK YOU TO BE WITH US TODAY. WHEN THE BIBLE SAYS THAT WHERE TWO OR THREE ARE GATHERED TOGETHER, THERE I AM IN THE MIDST OF YOU. THERE IS A SPECIAL ANOINTING OF GOD. WE'VE GOT THE WORD TO PROMISE IT. AND YET PEOPLE SAY, WELL, I KNOW THE WORD SAYS THIS, BUT I DON'T FEEL ANYTHING, SO GOD, COME AND BE WITH US. YOU'RE IN UNBELIEF WHEN YOU DO THAT. WHEN YOU... YOU KNOW, I WAS IN A CHURCH SERVICE ONE TIME, AND THE PRAISE AND WORSHIP WAS JUST REALLY AWESOME. AND THERE WAS A MANIFEST PRESENCE OF GOD. THERE WASN'T A GLORY CLOUD. I DIDN'T SEE ANYTHING. I DIDN'T HEAR ANGELS SINGING, BUT I JUST PERCEIVED THE MANIFEST PRESENCE OF GOD BECAUSE HE... YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN PSALMS CHAPTER 22 THAT HE INHABITS THE PRAISES OF HIS PEOPLE. AND WE WERE PRAISING GOD, AND I BELIEVE THERE WAS A MANIFEST PRESENCE OF GOD. BUT THEN THE WORSHIP LEADER, RIGHT IN THE MIDST OF THIS, GETS UP AND SAYS, OH, COME, LORD. GOD, WE'RE ASKING YOU TO COME. OH, GOD, POUR OUT YOUR SPIRIT. AND I DON'T KNOW IF EVERYBODY PERCEIVED IT THIS WAY OR IF IT WAS JUST ME, BUT WHEN THAT HAPPENED, THIS MANIFEST PRESENCE OF GOD JUST WAS GONE. Now, I'M NOT SAYING THAT GOD LEFT, BUT I'M SAYING THAT THIS MANIFEST PRESENCE, WHICH PEOPLE CALL THE ANOINTING OF GOD. ALL THE ANOINTING OF GOD IS, IS WHEN THE PRESENCE OF GOD MANIFESTS. IT BECOMES TANGIBLE. AND THIS TANGIBLE, MANIFEST PRESENCE OF GOD LEFT WHEN THE WORSHIP LEADER GOT TO BEGGING GOD TO DO WHAT HE HAD ALREADY DONE. YOU KNOW, PEOPLE SAYING, OH, GOD, I'M HUNGRY. OH, GOD, I'M THIRSTY. OH, GOD, POUR OUT YOUR SPIRIT. 
THE BIBLE SAYS THAT HE'S PREPARED A TABLE BEFORE US IN THE PRESENCE OF OUR ENEMIES. WE'VE GOT THIS, I DON'T KNOW, YOU KNOW, FIVE COURSE, TEN COURSE MEAL. WE GOT ANYTHING YOU COULD EVER WANT. WE ARE FULFILLED IN CHRIST. WE, THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD IS IN US. AND WHEN A PERSON IS SINGING ABOUT, OH, GOD, I'M HUNGRY, AND OH, GOD, I'M THIRSTY, I WANT TO SAY, EAT. YOU GOT THIS WHOLE TABLE. INSTEAD OF TALKING ABOUT BEING HUNGRY, JUST EAT. USE IT. BUT WHAT PEOPLE ARE SAYING IS, THAT, GOD, I KNOW YOU'RE WITH ME. I KNOW THAT IN CHRIST I'M COMPLETE. I KNOW ALL THESE THINGS, BUT I DON'T FEEL IT. I WANT TO FEEL IT. I WANT TO HAVE SOME EMOTIONAL EXPERIENCE. I WANT TO HAVE JUST, YOU KNOW, SOMETHING WHERE, MAN, I BREAK DOWN AND CRY IN in THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD. AND AGAIN, I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU CAN'T HAVE TIMES LIKE THAT, BUT FOR YOU TO MAKE THAT THE ULTIMATE, AND THIS IS THE GOAL, AND WHAT I'M SEEKING IS TO ENCOUNTER THE LORD IN SOME TANGIBLE, PHYSICAL WAY. YOU'RE SETTING YOURSELF UP FOR FAILURE BECAUSE YOU CAN'T LIVE THAT WAY. GOD DOESN'T WANT YOU TO LIVE THAT WAY. WITHOUT FAITH, IT'S IMPOSSIBLE TO PLEASE HIM. AGAIN, THAT BIRD COULD SIT... HE COULD JUST TALK TO YOU THROUGH SOME ANIMAL. HE COULD TALK TO YOU IN AN AUDIBLE VOICE. HE COULD HAVE EVERY CLOUD THAT PASSES OVER, SAY, RONDA, JIM, JOE, I LOVE YOU, AND HE COULD... HE COULD DO ALL OF THOSE THINGS, BUT THERE'S NO FAITH INVOLVED IN THAT. GOD LOVES FAITH. GOD IS A GOD OF FAITH. DID YOU KNOW WHEN HE ROSE FROM THE DEAD, THERE IS NOT ONE SINGLE EXAMPLE OF JESUS SHOWING HIMSELF TO A SINGLE PERSON THAT WASN'T ALREADY BORN AGAIN? NOT ONE. MAN, ALL HE HAD TO HAVE DONE, ALL OF THOSE PEOPLE SAW HIM CRUCIFIED. THEY SAW HIM DEAD AND BURIED. ALL HE HAD HAD TO HAVE DONE IS JUST WALK DOWN THE CITY STREETS OF JERUSALEM AND SHOW PEOPLE HIS HANDS AND HIS FEET. HE COULD HAVE HOVERED OVER THE CITY, AND MAN, I MEAN, PEOPLE WOULD HAVE GONE TO SAYING, HE IS GOD, AND THEY WOULD HAVE uh, ACKNOWLEDGED HIM. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? THEY WOULD HAVE BEEN FORCED INTO THAT BY WHAT THEY SAW. THERE IS NOT A SINGLE EXAMPLE OF JESUS APPEARING TO ANYBODY EXCEPT PEOPLE WHO ALREADY BELIEVED THAT HE WAS THE CHRIST. HE WASN'T GOING TO FORCE ANYBODY. PEOPLE ARE ALWAYS WANTING SOME. I HAVE PEOPLE COME TO ME, AND YOU KNOW, I'VE ACTUALLY HELD A PIECE OF WOOD, PETRIFIED WOOD, THAT A FRIEND OF MINE SAYS THAT HE WENT INSIDE OF NOAH'S ARK AND GOT THIS. THERE'S MOVIES ABOUT THIS. THERE'S ALL KINDS OF THINGS. PEOPLE SAY, WHY DON'T WE... WHY DON'T WE PUT THESE THINGS UP AND WE'LL... IT'LL JUST MAKE PEOPLE BELIEVE. THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT GOD IS. GOD DOESN'T MAKE PEOPLE BELIEVE. YOU KNOW, THERE WAS A PARABLE IN THE BOOK OF LUKE WHERE THE RICH MAN, uh, HE, he, YOU KNOW, HAD ALL OF THIS ABUNDANCE AND HE WAS JUST LIVING AN OPULENT LIFESTYLE AND THERE WAS A BEGGAR NAMED LAZARUS WHO GOT CRUMBS FROM THE TABLE. AND ANYWAY, BOTH OF THEM DIED. THE RICH MAN WENT TO HELL. LAZARUS WENT INTO ABRAHAM'S BOSOM AND IN HELL, THE RICH MAN LIFTED UP HIS EYES AND SAW LAZARUS THERE, AND HE BEGGED ABRAHAM. HE SAYS, SEND LAZARUS AND LET HIM DIP HIS FINGER IN WATER AND JUST PUT ONE DROP OF WATER ON MY TONGUE BECAUSE I'M TORMENTED IN THIS FLAME. AND ABRAHAM TOLD HIM, SAID, NOPE, THERE'S A GREAT GULF BETWEEN US. LAZARUS CAN'T GO TO YOU AND YOU CAN'T COME TO HIM. YOUR DECISION WAS MADE BEFORE YOU DIED AND YOU you FARED SUMPTUOUSLY EVERY DAY, BUT LAZARUS WAS A BEGGAR. HE HAD NOTHING. NOW HE'S GOT EVERYTHING AND YOU'VE GOT NOTHING, AND THAT'S JUST THE WAY IT IS. AND SO THIS MAN SAID, LORD, IF YOU CAN'T uh, COME AND, YOU KNOW, HAVE LAZARUS DIP HIS FINGER IN WATER AND COOL MY TONGUE, WELL, THEN SEND HIM BACK TO WITNESS TO MY BROTHERS SO THAT THEY'LL RECOGNIZE THEY NEED TO REPENT AND DON'T COME INTO THIS PLACE. AND ABRAHAM TOLD HIM, HE SAYS, THEY HAVE MOSES AND THE PROPHETS. LET THEM BELIEVE THE WORD. AND HE SAID, NO, THEY WON'T BELIEVE THE WORD, BUT IF SOMEBODY ROSE FROM THE DEAD, THEN THEY WOULD BELIEVE. AND ABRAHAM TOLD HIM, HE SAYS, IF THEY DON'T BELIEVE THE LAW AND THE PROPHETS, THEY WILL NOT BELIEVE THOUGH ONE ROSE FROM THE DEAD. THAT IS A SCRIPTURAL COMMENTARY THAT, YOU KNOW, IF A PERSON DOESN'T BELIEVE BECAUSE THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS REVEALED THINGS TO THEM, AND IF THEY DON'T DO IT BY FAITH AND RESPOND IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM, YOU CAN'T FORCE THEM INTO BELIEVING BECAUSE YOU PROVE THAT NOAH'S ARK EXISTS OR BECAUSE YOU FIND THE ARK OF THE COVENANT OR, YOU KNOW, ALL OF THESE DIFFERENT THINGS THAT PEOPLE ARE WANTING TO DO THESE THINGS THAT'LL JUST FORCE PEOPLE TO BELIEVE. YOU CAN'T FORCE A PERSON INTO BELIEVING. IT HAS TO BE A CHOICE. FAITH COMES BY HEARING AND HEARING BY THE WORD OF GOD. ROMANS CHAPTER 10, VERSE 17. FAITH DOESN'T COME BY SEEING, 
BY ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND I'M TELLING YOU, THIS IS WHERE SO MANY CHRISTIANS ARE MISSING IT. THEY ARE SEEKING GOD AND THEY'RE SAYING, OH, GOD, I JUST WANT YOU TO POUR OUT YOUR LOVE. THEY DON'T. WHAT THEY'RE WANTING IS A FEELING OF LOVE, WHICH I'VE HAD IT, AND I STILL HAVE IT, AND I EXPERIENCE THINGS, BUT I AM NOT DOMINATED BY THAT. AND BAD THINGS HAPPEN TO GOOD PEOPLE, AND I HAVE THINGS HAPPEN ALL OF THE TIME. I JUST MADE A REALLY STUPID MISTAKE JUST TWO DAYS AGO AND SOMETHING THAT BOTHERED ME, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, I DIDN'T FEEL GOOD ABOUT IT. BUT JUST BECAUSE I DON'T FEEL GOOD DOESN'T MEAN THAT I FEEL LIKE GOD LEFT ME AND I HAVE TO SAY, OH, GOD, PLEASE COME BACK AND PLEASE RETURN. NO, I GO BY THE TRUTH. I STAND ON WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS, EVEN THOUGH I DON'T ALWAYS FEEL THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD. I HAVE PEOPLE COME UP TO ME ALL THE TIME AND SAY, WOULD YOU PLEASE PRAY THAT GOD WILL JUST POUR OUT HIS LOVE IN MY LIFE. AND I TELL THEM, NO, I'M NOT GOING TO PRAY THAT. AND PEOPLE ARE NORMALLY SHOCKED BY THAT, LIKE, WHAT ARE YOU SAYING? ISN'T IT GOOD THAT I, YOU KNOW, HAVE GOD JUST POUR OUT HIS LOVE? THE BIBLE SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 8, THAT GOD COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD US AND THAT WHILE WE WERE YET SINNERS, CHRIST DIED FOR US. AND MUCH MORE NOW THAT WE ARE BORN AGAIN, MUCH MORE NOW DOES HE LOVE US. AND THE SCRIPTURE JUST TALKS ABOUT THAT GOD IS LOVE. GOD SO LOVED THE WORLD. GOD HAS LOVED YOU. HE HAS COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD YOU, AND THE BIBLE TEACHES THAT HE NEVER TAKES IT AWAY. IF YOU HEAR SOME NOISE, IT'S BECAUSE I GOT CONSTRUCTION GOING RIGHT ON THE OTHER SIDE OF THIS WALL, AND SO PROGRESS IS IN PLACE, AND uh, ANYWAY, it, I HOPE IT DOESN'T DISTRACT FROM WHAT I'M SAYING, BUT uh, WE TOLD HIM JUST TO KEEP WORKING, AMEN, BECAUSE we, WE NEED TO CONTINUE TO GROW AND ACCOMMODATE THE GROWTH. SO ANYWAY, WHEN PEOPLE ASK ME FOR PRAYER AND STUFF, AND THEY SAY, WOULD YOU pl- JUST PLEASE PRAY THAT GOD POUR OUT HIS LOVE IN MY LIFE? NO, BECAUSE THE BIBLE SAYS HE'S ALREADY DONE IT, BUT I DON'T FEEL IT. THEY MAY NOT SAY IT THAT WAY, BUT THAT'S BASICALLY WHAT IT ALWAYS COMES DOWN TO. I KNOW THAT THE WORD SAYS THAT HE LOVES ME, THAT LOVE IS A FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT. GALATIANS 5, 22. I'VE GOT LOVE, JOY, AND PEACE. i GOT ALL OF THESE. I KNOW THAT THE BIBLE SAID, BUT I DON'T FEEL IT. YOU KNOW, WHAT I TELL PEOPLE IS JUST PULL YOUR THUMB OUT OF YOUR MOUTH AND GROW UP. GOD LOVES YOU BECAUSE HE IS LOVE AND NOT BECAUSE YOU ARE LOVELY. Well, THOSE ARE BIG STATEMENTS RIGHT THERE. BUT WHEN A PERSON SAYS, WOULD YOU JUST PLEASE PRAY THAT GOD WILL LOVE ME? NO, I WON'T DO THAT. AND YOU REST IN THE FACT THAT, GOD, YOU ARE NEVER GOING TO LEAVE ME NOR FORSAKE ME. NOTHING WILL EVER CHANGE. AND LET ME SAY THIS, IF THE LORD WAS TO ANSWER YOUR PRAYERS AND JUST GIVE YOU SOME KIND OF A FEELING AND AN EMOTION WHERE YOU'RE OVERWHELMED BY HIS LOVE, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU IT'S NOT GOING TO BE THAT WAY ALL OF THE TIME. THERE WILL BE TIMES THAT SATAN WILL COME UP AND HE WILL DO SOMETHING TO PUSH YOUR BUTTONS. HE WILL HAVE SOME PERSON THAT COMES AND CAUSES PROBLEMS IN YOUR LIFE. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU WHEN THAT HAPPENS, THE FEELING IS GOING TO LEAVE. AND IF YOU ONLY BELIEVE GOD LOVES YOU BECAUSE YOU FEEL IT, WELL, THEN YOU ARE GOING TO HAVE TIMES THAT YOU ARE SEPARATED FROM THE LOVE OF GOD. THAT'S BEING CARNAL. YOU NEED TO GET TO WHERE YOU WALK BY WHAT GOD SAYS ABOUT YOU, WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS, AND NOT HOW YOU FEEL. YOU KNOW, BECAUSE I HAD THIS SUPERNATURAL EXPERIENCE WITH THE LORD WHERE I WAS JUST CAUGHT UP IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD AND I FELT ALL OF THESE THINGS, RIGHT AFTER THAT, I GOT DRAFTED AND SENT TO VIETNAM. AND IN VIETNAM, MAN, THERE WAS A LOT OF BAD THINGS GOING ON, AND I I HAD LOST THIS FEELING AND THIS EMOTION OF GOD'S PRESENCE WITH ME. AND SO I SPENT A LOT OF TIME IN VIETNAM BEGGING GOD, OH, GOD, POUR OUT YOUR SPIRIT AGAIN. OH, GOD, TOUCH ME. GOD, I WANT TO FEEL THIS. I WANT TO KNOW THAT YOU LOVE ME. I KNEW THAT THE WORD SAID HE LOVED ME, BUT I I WANTED TO FEEL IT. I WANTED TO EXPERIENCE IT. AND I BEGGED GOD. I COULD SPEND A LOT OF TIME TELLING YOU THINGS THAT I DID. I MEAN, I WAS DESPERATE. ANYWAY, LONG STORY, BUT FINALLY, ONE DAY I WOKE UP, AND I DON'T KNOW HOW, I DON'T HAVE THE WORDS TO DESCRIBE THIS, BUT IT'S LIKE GOD JUST LEFT. IT'S LIKE THERE WAS NO GOD IN THIS WORLD. NOW, I KNOW THAT THE BIBLE SAYS HE'LL NEVER LEAVE US NOR FORSAKE US, BUT I MEAN ALL FEELING WAS GONE. FEAR CAME IN. I WAS PETRIFIED. I COULDN'T LOOK AT A PERSON IN THE FACE. I WAS A CHAPLAIN'S ASSISTANT, AND I WAS SUPPOSED TO BE LIKE HIS SECRETARY, AND WHEN A PERSON CAME IN AND WANTED TO SEE THE CHAPLAIN, I'D HAVE TO TALK TO HIM, SET UP AN APPOINTMENT AND STUFF. AND I LITERALLY WENT AND 
hid in a closet in our bunker and put clothes over me so that I wouldn't have to see anybody. I mean, I was petrified. I was miserable. And for three days, I was begging God, Oh, God, come back. What's wrong? What have I done? And anyway, after three days, I woke up on the fourth morning and I was sleeping on an army cot. And I just woke up kneeling beside that cot and nothing special had happened. I wasn't hearing any voices. There wasn't seeing anything, but it was just back to normal. It was just back to peace. There wasn't anything special, but there wasn't anything bad. It was like this void was just gone. And you know what? I just, I woke up, pray, and, and it was back to just peace. And when that happened, I learned something. And I learned that, you know what, I was seeking some emotional feeling to guarantee that God's Word was true and that He was with me and that He loved me. And after that situation, I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm never going to beg you again. I know that you were with me because I felt what it was like if there was no God. I really believe that this is what hell is going to be like. Hell is going to be the absolute uh, absence of God. You know, as bad as this world gets, as bad as some things get, God is still... He makes the sun to rise on the just and the unjust. He sends rain on us. God is still there ministering to us. But in hell, there is going to be an absolute vacuum of God and of anything that's good. And I think that's kind of what I experienced. I know according to the Word that God never leaves us nor forsakes us, but I just think God got tired of me begging and bellyating, belly aching and begging him to constantly do something. And he just showed me what it would be like if he wasn't with me. And I have never asked again for, oh God, come and be with me. I rest in what the scripture says. And other people will just be begging, oh God, come and oh God, be with us. And I'm sitting here thinking he's promised that he is. He's here. Now, we can manifest him more and stuff. And it's okay in a sense to want to to understand and see the manifestation of God. But I'm telling you, most people are just totally carnal and they are trying to perceive God in some physical way. That's the very thing that caused Philip to miss God because he was looking at Jesus in the natural. He was looking at the vehicle that Jesus used to get around in in this world. And that wasn't a special vehicle. And because of it, he didn't recognize who Jesus really was. He wasn't satisfied, not because Jesus isn't satisfying, but because he was trying to perceive him in only the physical, natural realm. Man, I've got a lot more to share on this. I'm out of time today. We're going to continue this into next week's broadcast. I encourage you to listen in next week. And also, please get this little pamphlet that I put together entitled, Are You Satisfied with Jesus? It'll be a blessing. Listen to our announcer and call or write today. Andrew's teaching, Are You Satisfied with Jesus?, is available as a booklet. And today, Andrew would like to offer it as his free gift to you. Go to awmi.net to receive your free copy and to order additional copies to share with friends and family for only $1 each. This series is also available in a two-part CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. So to the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. They don't even realize how many people they're really impacting. My life got impacted by it. Um, I'm hearing the gospel. I'm in the ministry. I'm fulfilling out the call of God on my life because of the partners and their seeds sown and their generosity and their hearts advance the kingdom of God. And so uh, to all of the partners at Andrew Womack Ministries, I'm just so grateful for them. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. 
On March 23, 1968, Andrew Womack received a dramatic revelation of God's unconditional love and grace. Since then, Andrew has shared this nearly too good to be true news with millions of listeners worldwide. With his daily television show reaching 4.4 billion people worldwide, Andrew's message is changing more lives than ever before. He's expanding the vision through Karis Bible College, which has already discipled thousands of students around the globe and continues to grow every year. To learn more about what God is doing through the ministry, visit awmi.net. Whatever his dream for you is, everything that it takes to accomplish that is already provided. It's already been given in the spirit realm. True courage is the ability to do what's necessary and do what's right, even when we have fear. What is a dead end to us is nothing but an opportunity for God to show forth who He is. Have you checked out the Inside Story yet? It's a great way for you to get an inside look of what is happening at Andrew Womack Ministries. With years of interviews, there's a lot to get excited about. Check out this month's featured story today, only at awmi.net. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going by what I see. I go by what the Word of God says. There's more than just this physical realm. There's also a spiritual realm. I don't care what this looks like. I know what God's Word says. I was told that I would always have severe asthma and food allergies. I was born missing the left side of my heart with a very small chance of living. The doctors indicated that I had a permanent brain injury and that I would never function in mainstream society again. I'm Tim McDermott and my brother and I were told that we would never recover from autism. From a young age, I had several diagnoses, including Asperger's syndrome, dis-executive syndrome, and communication disorders. My brother James was diagnosed with autism before he turned three. For years, it seemed like we would never be normal. But then my parents stumbled across the healing journey of Hannah Terides. A few weeks later, we went to Andrew's free Grace and Faith conference, where we were healed of autism. Today, 10 years later, I'm still walking in my complete healing, and I am not alone. I haven't needed my inhaler in years, and now I eat whatever I want. My heart grew back its missing piece, and the doctors cannot explain it. Today, I'm completely healed, and I get to teach God's truth about healing. Because people like you partnered with Andrew O'Mac Ministries, we have all been given our lives back. We cannot thank you enough for your generosity, but there are still millions of lives out there looking for the same truth that set us free. Will you help us bring this message to them? The word needs to get out to change people's lives. Please consider a partnership. Please partner with this ministry. It's amazing. Please consider being a partner with this ministry. You know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today.